Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to talk about the temperature and the equilibrium constant. We're going to start off by remembering the factors that affect the equilibrium constant, Keq. We're then going to look at the relationship between or what happens to K in exothermic and endothermic reactions. And then we're going to introduce something called the clausius clapeyron equation as a, a, a way for us to be able to mathematically look at what happens to K at different temperatures. So, in the past we've talked about this idea of the factors that affect the equilibrium constant. We've said that temperature is the only factor, the only thing that we would change that will change the equilibrium constant for a given reaction. That is, it is a constant value at a given temperature. If you change the temperature, you will change the value. Part of this video is, is really going to unpack, well, why does that change the temperature? But it's important for us to recognise that changing other factors like concentration, you know, either increasing or decreasing things, changing the pressure or the volume of the system or adding a catalyst, um, either, you know, so in the case of a catalyst, it doesn't shift the equilibrium position, whereas these other factors will cause a shift in the equilibrium system. So the reaction quotient, Q, that this idea of, you know, the amounts of different things that will be shifted in that moment, um, or the equilibrium position, we can, if we're thinking qualitatively, you know, on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. But then one of the things that we know is that Le Chatelier's principle tells us that if we change the concentrations or if we change something like this, the system will shift to try and counteract that change and the ratio will be maintained. That is, in the end, the K value will stay the same. Now, it don't, we don't go back to the same concentrations as before, but we go back to the same ratio, which means that then we've re-established equilibrium, K is the same, and, you know, and so nothing otherwise has changed. Um, but what we're going to see is that temperature does something different. So the first thing I'll, I'll we want to focus on is an exothermic reaction. And we're going to say, all right, well, what happens if we do this to an exothermic reaction. So we're going to consider this reaction here. The formation of sulfur trioxide is exothermic. So as we combine sulfur dioxide, SO2, and oxygen gas, we produce two moles of SO3 and then some energy that leaves the system. Okay, and this is our equilibrium expression over here once we've you know, factored in the coefficients and everything. Okay, so I'm going to keep drawing or drawing attention to this fraction as we go. So let's say we increase the temperature of the system. Now, we know from Le Chatelier's principle that increasing the temperature is going to cause us to shift to the left. We're going to be using up or trying to remove that added energy. So this energy term has all of a sudden increased. We're going to shift to the left to use it up. Two things happen as a result of that. Firstly, we increase the reactant concentration. We have more SO2 and O2. Along with that, we also have less of the product concentration. We have less SO3. So if we look at our equation here, we've got less of the numerator and more of the denominator. Okay, so the, this fraction is now shifted in order for the denominator to be bigger so and the numerator to be smaller. When that happens to a fraction, when that happens to a number, it decreases. It's gotten smaller as a result of increasing the temperature. But what about an endothermic reaction? What about if we do that? So if we increase, so, so let's look at this example. From going from N2O4 to nitrogen dioxide, um, absorbs energy. Okay, this is our K expression over here. As we increase the temperature of this system, instead of shifting to the left, we shift to the right. That is, in order to try and use up that extra energy um, that has been done, we favour the forward reaction. So, so, along the same lines of what we saw before, this means we now get more product concentration and we decrease the reactant concentration. So we get more NO2 and less N2O4. Looking at this, though, that means our numerator's gotten bigger, our denominator's gotten smaller, so that means K has gone up. The number that we have, the constant that describes this ratio, is now bigger than it was before once we have increased the temperature. All right, so I'm going to show you a table here that's going to summarize th th this, what we've seen, and then think about what would happen with a decrease in temperature. Okay, so for an exothermic reaction, increasing the temperature makes K smaller, but decreasing it makes it bigger. And then vice versa for an endothermic reaction, that increasing the temperature makes K bigger, but decreasing it makes K smaller. Both of it has to do with which direction the equilibrium shifts to counteract the temperature change, and therefore whether we've got more products or more reactants than we did before. 
Okay, so if you one, you know, a good strategy that you can use here is just thinking about remembering one and then the opposite happens to the other. So you can remember what happens to an exothermic reaction or remember what happens, you know, for an increase in temperature and then think about a decrease. Okay, it's just you, you've got the opposite things going on. But then we've talked about this in a qualitative sense, but how could we actually calculate or work out the how the change in K would work at a different temperature? Well, this is where we introduce what's called the clausius clapeyron equation. I think I've pronounced that as best as I can. Don't hold me to it too much, okay? But so what we see is that there's actually a mathematical relationship between the temperature in Kelvin and this K for a gas system of gases. So it would be Kp if we want to be a bit more specific here. Okay, so we're thinking about gas systems. And it looks like this. It's a bit of a beast of an equation. We're not going to be using this or doing any calculations to do with this. It's just to show you that there is a relationship. It's not just kind of some woo-woo stuff that we don't know. It's actually, there is some maths that we can do here to, to solve for information here. So this ln, so this is the natural logarithm. If you haven't encountered logarithms yet, that, you know, you, you will in, in due course. Um, it's, you know, it's a mathematical function looking at the relationship between the K values and the temperature values in Kelvin. Okay, and so this term here, this is delta H, you know, thinking about it, the enthalpy change for the reaction, and then R is the ideal gas constant, 8.314. Okay, and these are our temperature values. So if we take data of the K, so determining the, the equilibrium constant, and, you know, we plot that against the inverse temperature in Kelvin, we get a straight line. And the straight, straight line has a slope, and that slope is this delta H on R value. So if we know what this is, then we can draw up a slope for the line. Or if we don't know what it is, that we can use this information to calculate delta H as well, if, we, if that's what we're after. Okay, But then this means that we can say, all right, well, I know what K is at this temperature, you know, K1 at T1. Well, what about at T2? What's it going to do? We can actually solve for um, K2 in this equation. By looking at this data, looking at the value that we have, we can make those calculations. So there is a relationship there. We can use it if we want to. We're not going to do any calculations to this effect for ourselves, but just to show you that it is there. So we looked at this idea that temperature is the only factor that affects the equilibrium constant. If we change concentrations, the ratio still gets maintained because of Le Chatelier's principle shifting the equilibrium back. But that that temperature does influence the K value for exothermic and endothermic reactions, depending on whether we've increased or decreased the temperature to change the system. Okay, in order that we get a shift in order to use up the added energy or to replace the lost energy, and that shifts the amount of reactants and products we have. And we've used the clausius clapeyron equation, we've introduced it to see the maths relationship between these ideas. All right, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.